Hey everybody, Julio Rodriguez here with Motorola Solutions of Vigilon. Um, hope you guys had a great week. Uh, I know I had an awesome week getting the to tour a lot of different places. Um, let's see, this week I went to a uh, local park where we were looking at uh, a new monument that had been put up uh, over the past year and uh, we were getting ready to upgrade the camera system that was in place to add analytics to it and uh, do a lot of different uh, really cool uh, proactive uh, solutions for that camera system there so that you know when it's late at night somebody's in the park um, we'd be able to proactively alert to the presence of a person so you don't have to wait for the camera to use uh, you know the after the typical after the the event uh, solution where you go searching for it and you know can't really find anything this way it lets you know ahead of time but uh, the really really interesting thing that I got to do this week was learn some new applications for our camera system that came from one of our end users. So uh, Avigilon uh, does a lot of work here in Kentucky with uh, some distilleries. We have a lot of factory work. And this week, a lot of information or a lot of questions came up about how we use maps. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. Um, hopefully we get to uh, answer some great questions. I'm gonna try and see if I can get everybody pulled up here. Um, let's see, I'm gonna make sure I get everybody so I can see you guys. There we go. Last time I had a little bit of trouble uh, getting to all the questions that were popping up on the fly. So I want to make sure that we can do that. Just give me just a second here. We'll get right to it. Hey, there it is. All right. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is this uh, announcement that just came out from a Vigilon. We are releasing a 61 megapixel camera. It is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I can't even explain how interesting and, and how I can't wait for the applications for this. You know, we already have um, uh, high megapixel cameras. I've got a 16 megapixel camera in my demo kit that I use that we do for large parking lot areas, uh, stadiums and stuff like that. So this is going to be almost four times the resolution of the existing 16 megapixel HD Pro. And it's going to have analytics, I believe, up to 26 megapixels. So it's still a lot of preliminary stuff, things that are coming out, new information that's coming out about it. But yeah, 61 megapixels is going to be the uh, new Vigilon HD Pro camera. Let me switch over to this here. Yeah. There we go. So the H5 Pro camera is coming out. We're going to have it available in 8, 16, 26, 40, and 61 megapixels. So this is uh, something that's extremely, extremely high megapixel, high performance cameras. This is just a preliminary spec sheet. I'm not going to go into all the details on it because it's likely to change before it comes out uh, into the market. But the idea is that you're going to be able to cover a humongous area with a single camera where typically you'd have to have multiple cameras in place to uh to get that type of coverage so i'm really really excited to uh to have that come out and actually i wanted to show you what this looks like just to give you a sort of a hint this is a map on our acc software today and we have our pro cameras listed here on our plano texas facility so this one here is our 16 megapixel camera. Where did it go? Here it is. That's the 12. Let me see if I can get the 16. Oh, it keeps giving me the 12. I'll try it this way. There we go. All right, so this is a 16 megapixel image. And let me minimize myself here so we can get more of the screen. It's a 16 megapixel image of our parking lot. And we've, I've counted up the parking spaces before. It's about 39, 40 parking spaces all the way to the back here where you see the little red curb. And at 16 megapixels, the detail that you get at the end of the scene, I'm just digitally zooming here, is pretty amazing. So this is 16 megapixels is twice the resolution of a 4K TV. That's another way to put it. 
in our world, uh, 1080p is two megapixels, uh, eight megapixels is 4K. So this is twice the resolution of a 4K TV coming through streaming from our Plano, Texas office all the way to my computer here in Louisville, Kentucky, and then all the way back out to you guys. So it's really amazing to me how quickly we can move around in this image and the level of detail that we can get at 16 megapixels. We've got another camera out in our Plano, Texas facility. Let's see if I can bring it up here. Do, do, do. Go here. That is running 30 megapixels. So this would be about half of what we'd see coming through on that 60 megapixel camera. So going on to Google Maps, I looked and this camera is pointed back to the other side of the tracks. You can see them here to the other end of um, the block. And then there's a shopping center across the street where there's the Lux Salon down in Plano, Texas. So you can see that the detail that we get is pretty amazing with 30 megapixels. And this camera that's coming out is going to be twice that resolution. Um, so I, mean, I was doing a demo yesterday. And this is what the camera looks like at night. So if you want to see what the detail that you'd get at nighttime would be. This is how you would see it. So these cameras don't have infrared on them. It's way too far to be trying to shine an infrared camera. But I did at some point yesterday, it was about 3 o'clock Eastern time. Yesterday, let me go here. There was a truck parked in that parking lot. So that's about 800 feet away with a 30 megapixel camera. And we can still zoom in and get a license plate, read that this was ideal pest control, and just about get a phone number off of that uh, truck from about 800 feet away. So that's, again, half the resolution of what you would expect to see in the uh, in the 60 megapixel camera. So it, it's, you know, I thought it was pretty amazing that we could, uh, we could see that level of detail in one single camera lens <laughs> from one camera. So, you know, I get excited about it. It's uh, something that I really like uh, getting into and, and learning about. And uh, yeah, this is pretty amazing stuff. All right, good deal. So the other thing I wanted to talk about today is the maps. So we've got a map here of our facility in Texas. And this is typical for what we see in, uh, in the security world. You know, we've got maps of a facility, a building map. But an idea came up over the week that uh, I wanted to share with you guys that talks about how a map could be used for security in production. So if we're using the camera to watch a process, how can we use a map to help maybe a, an operator that's staring at a grid of, you know, eight to 10 cameras and they all look the same. Um, it's something that, you know, would really help out if the operator needs to go to a certain area of the product line to check on a problem. How would they know which one to look at and how would they know um, what to review or, you know, where to go in the plant, you know, cause it could be a lot of different areas. So what I came up with, was um, an indoor map and putting some cameras on an indoor map. But then the trick on top of that is, is to take that uh, camera map and also tie it to an alarm. So if you watched this video last week, we did the uh, analytic alarm with the person in a restricted area. So our alarms can be done with all sorts of different options. And I'll show you here. Let's jump into, let's go into site set up and we'll go into my site since I have administrative privileges here and we'll create a new rule. So this is how we build our rules and alerts in our system. We can do anything from servers starting up, license expired, database error, all sorts of different server events. Let's close that. And here's the device events. So for us, cameras are devices. Um, we can do an alert when the device fails, when it's connected, you have network packet loss, we can send an alert based on that. Um, and here's the really interesting ones. So we can start an alert when motion detection is started, when motion detection ends, 
when a video analytics event starts and when a video analytics event ends. So for us today, we're going to be using the video analytics event started. So we can go in here, pick a video analytics event that we already built. I made the uh, person in a restricted area. When that happens on any camera, let's pick a specific camera, the one that I have connected. That would be helpful. Then we can start saying, here's what we're going to do. We can say you can do things like display an on-screen message, send an email, and you can do it for all users or you can do it for a specific user. Uh, start live streaming, start a video intercom call, open focus of attention. There's all these different things that we can do. So let me go back to my rule that I have for person in restricted area. We can take a little, we can take a look at that. So this is set up so that when a person in the restricted area event starts on my six megapixel box camera that I have connected, it's going to trigger an alarm called person in restricted area alarm. If I click through it, we can see that I've got this always enabled and the rule is enabled all the time. If I wanted to put this on a schedule, I can say that Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., uh, weekly, monthly, we can select what days of the week this is an alarm. So if it's something like, uh, you know, uh, there's no motion detection and your line is down. So you can say that from Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. to 7 a.m., it's not an alarm. It can be turned off at that time. It doesn't have to be, you know, something that's on 24 seven. So we can set up the, the rule to trigger whatever we want it to trigger. Cancel that. And then we go into alarm and person in restricted area is called an external software event for us. And then we can tie it to a specific camera, have it view the link camera when the alarm is triggered. And then we can say who else we wanted to uh, to notify. So this is in case there's more people, we want to let uh, you know cloud administrators, Danny's group, strict restricted users. We can let it know or specify certain people, and then from there we can actually tell it to you know come on down the line. And if this person doesn't acknowledge, go to the next person. Go to the next person. So once we put those pieces in place, now we've got our alert set up and we can go back to our map. There we go. So whenever we just have an alert without our map, we, we just get the little red square. So if I come over here, person standing in a restricted area, there we go. We've got our alarm. And that's great for someone that's watching the camera system and they need to know that something is going on that's, that's out of the ordinary. But a different way to help them with the map is to have this up and you can have all of your other cameras. Maybe it's in a configuration like this where there's more cameras pulled up. And then you can leave this one open up here. Let me switch this to day mode a little bit easier to see. Switch it to the light theme. There we go. So now when I walk into this area, the cool thing is that the camera icon is going to go red. So the, cust the customer, the operator is going to immediately know which camera without having to search through the grid, which camera is going off. So we're going to try this again. Hopefully it'll work. And person in restricted area. And now the camera icon is, is red. You've got a pop-up here on the right-hand side in the first available camera uh, slot, and the person in restricted area alarm is going off, and you acknowledge the alarm. We can also make it so that uh, if you have to acknowledge the alarm, that it's required that you enter in some information. So they have to maybe enter in a uh, specific, you know, uh, site or not a site, a situation number or you know any sort of incident number things like that, that that would go along with it but it just i thought it was a really really cool application that you know instead of just having your typical outdoor maps that we could actually put something indoor on an assembly line process and make the system go and really really change the way somebody's going to use this camera system that's not the, the ordinary uh you know security camera outlay that we normally do. So that's something that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, before I go, 
I want to give you a really quick sneak peek, sneak, sneak peek at something that's coming out next uh, two weeks. In about two weeks, um, we have another camera technology coming out that's just going to be completely game-changing. And for us, we we're calling this the AI NVR. And man, when you see this thing in place, it's going to be ridiculous. This thing has the ability to give third-party cameras a Vigilon analytics or a Vigilon non-analytic cameras the ability to do classified objects, appearance search, facial recognition, all in one recorder and analytics engine. So can't wait to show you guys that next time. Um, maybe we'll have some more information by then. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, give me a call or uh, get a hold of us over at Avigilon. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot.